so excited that you have joined us online tonight. We hope you have had a great week. That's exactly right. Now, if you are posting anything about Excess Online on any social media, be sure to use the hashtag that is here and yeah, hope it's a yeah. good time. We have such a big night planned for you guys, so stay tuned. Phenomenal. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, so am I. You guys should be as well. But tonight, before we do that, we have a special, well, a few special guests right. of our own. Mm -hmm. So we have a little challenge we're going to do, and we have our three lovely volunteers coming out, guys. Come on. We have Lottie Dolman, Caleb Dolman, and Bree Wicks as our three contestants <laughs> for tonight. Yeah, so they don't really know what they're doing tonight, but it's going to be fun. Are you guys keen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so sweet. to start us off, what we're going to do is they are going to say their favourite chip. Sweet chilli. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I like light and tangy. They're my favourite. <laughs> mm. Um, my favourite was probably the Red Rock Deli honey soy chips. Yeah, nice. So nice. good. Beautiful. We're so excited. So guys, take a seat and let's get the show on the road. Let's go. Where's my plate? There it is. <laughs> oh. Twisty. Twisty. Yeah. yeah. Have a smell. See what you think. Salt and vinegar. No, you gotta taste it first. <laughs> chicken! Uh, it's no, it's not chicken. Tiny. It's not chicken. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> whatever. It, yeah, me neither. Lamington? That would be good. Is it that natural confectionery co brand? Nah. Cheese and onion? Well, you haven't said anything. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know, it's weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's <laughs> had a little bit of tanginess to it. But it's not cheesy. I don't know, they're not too bad. Bloody. No. <laughs> no, no, no head start. Yeah. Can we go? Yeah, have a smell. Oh. Oh, these are veggie chips. Oh. Salt, oh, and oh, salt and vinegar. Yeah. Salt and vinegar. Yeah. Salt and vinegar, spot on. Oh, kind of good. Ah, uh, where is it? Oh, See what you think? Oh, it's here. Oh, those are. Um, oh, pea yeah. crisps. <laughs> Spicy. Oh, I'm scared. Where is it? Can we go? Yeah. Have, oh, have, no, I'm scared. have a smell. I have no idea what that is. I'm confused. Ew. <laughs> <What> <laughs> is, is it like, is that? Is it like ice and <laughs> What is that? What is that? <laughs> is it like oh, sherbet no. or something? Yeah. Chocolate! Yay! Yay! <laughs> and shove it in. Oh, I'm scared after this. I don't have a chip. Go for it. I don't know if I want to go. I know what it is. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what is it? Oh, that's rank. An olive? Oh, it's like those peckish biscuits. Yeah. Okay. With some... What is this? What the heck? It's not olive, is it? No. Go no. on, Brie. It's not salty. Oh, that's gross, though. You've got this. No, but what's the... Oh, something fell, fell off. off. Oh. I just have no idea. Ready, Brie? <laughs> Do I have to do yeah, it all in one go? Yep, yeah. straight in. Go. And then... Okay. Go on. In. <laughs> and have a drink. <laughs> I've never had that in my life. I don't know. Do you guys want to know what it is? Yeah. Yeah, you got me. Gherkins. 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 Oh, I said pickles. Yeah, you were close. Oh my gosh, that's kind of gross. At Mac, as they say, pickles, pickles or gherkins are the same thing, can't they? His TikTok is Caleb Dunman 4. <laughs> Chuck it a follow, guys. And what about um, your dog as well, Bruce? Lennox the Cavadal. Caleb's just dead silent. <laughs> He's embarrassed about his TikTok fame. Oh, it's not fame, that's why. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Get keen for the rest of tonight. And um, yeah, if you want, comment below what your favorite chips are and we'll see what is the most popular yeah. one. And the winner, well, the person with the most, most kind of creative comment will win all leftovers that Caleb is holding right now. All right, have, have a good, good night, night, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, Xess. Hope you're having fun watching this on your couch tonight. Um, my name's Tiana, for any of you who don't know me, and I'm one of the leaders at Xess. Um, this week, suffering has been a topic that's been on my heart. Um, we see it everywhere we look, on TV, on our Facebook feeds. Everywhere we look, there are people who are suffering. And I've been learning as I've been reading Jeremiah this week that there is some suffering that we understand and some suffering that we don't understand. 
And I've remembered an analogy that a really wise pastor taught me really recently about suffering. You see, there's the suffering we do understand. Kid does something wrong in his class. Maybe he swears at a teacher. He gets a detention. That consequence for a bad decision makes sense to us. However, there is some suffering that we don't understand. What about the poor that can't feed their families? Or even this virus? No one asked for it and no one deserves to be fighting for their life. Jeremiah 17, 7-8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I love this verse because it talks about trusting God through all seasons of life. So let me share this analogy with you. There was a son and his father. The father was a surgeon. And one day he sat his son down and said, look, son, we must never hurt anyone. We must always be kind to people. Now that son took that rule into everyday life, his schoolyard, his friends, anywhere he goes. He goes, I have to be kind to everyone. I can't hurt anyone. But one day he walks into the surgical suite that his father is operating in. Now the father has a patient on the bed. He's got one of those, you know, scalpel things in his hands and he's ready to begin surgery. And the son goes, but dad, you told me not to hurt anyone. And the father goes to his son, look, son, I'm not hurting anyone. You don't understand what I'm about to do is going to save a life. You see, the son did not understand that in that moment, what his father was doing, although it looked like hurting and pain, it was actually going to help that person. And we may not understand God's master and bigger plan for us, but we can trust in him because his promises never fail. So I encourage you this week, keep trusting in God. And even though you may not understand what's going on around you, he has a plan. I can guarantee it. And he's got you back. Hey, Excess. As you may know, Easter is just around the corner and we are so excited. Now at Excess, one of our most famous traditions over the Easter long weekend is Messy Games. So we thought, why not bring Messy Games to Excess Online? But to make this happen, we need your help. Um, in the next few days, we're gonna post a list of challenges onto the socials. Now these may include a little bit of flour, maybe some tomato sauce, but we need your help. We want you guys to be involved. So stay tuned to the socials just to see what these challenges are. Send through a video of yourself completing the challenge and yeah, look forward to seeing what that's gonna look like. See you then. G'day Excess. Um, we're now gonna be spending some time worshiping together. Um, and I acknowledge that it's gonna look a lot different than uh, we normally have on a Friday night. Normally we're all together in the church and we've got the band there with us. Um, but the band's pre-recorded some worship and that's gonna be the new normal for the next little while. Um, but I'd encourage you, still pour out your heart in worship. I'd encourage you to stand up and be engaged. The same God is worthy to be praised here tonight as he is every other week when we're together at Excess. Um, it looks different and it's a bit different. You might be with your parents, you might be with your dog. I don't know, it might be a bit uncomfortable worshipping in front of them. But I want to encourage you to still be engaged. Stand up and give God the glory. Um, so would you join with us tonight as we worship? Let's sing. Salvation sounds a new beginning. As distant hearts begin believing. Redemption's bit is unrelenting. Your love goes on. Your love goes on.
Time is up for chasing shadows You gave the world a light to follow I've been strong and I've been broken within a moment I've been faithful and I've been reckless at every bend I've held everything together and watched it shatter I said so little and I have crumbled in the same breath I have wrestled and I have trembled towards surrender Chased my heart adrift and drifted home again Plundered blessings till I've been desperate to find redemption Every time I turn around, Lord, you're still there Before I was lost, I was yours. Before I was known, grace to spare for all my mistakes and that part to This kind of love It's so well. This kind of love is who you are It's a grace I could never add up To be somebody you still want But somehow You love me as you find me Saying, who am I? Who am I to think your glory needs my praises? But if this 
Start your own song. I need 
Access Youth, it's so great to engage with you tonight, uh, whether you're in your living room, your kitchen, even on the dunny, it's great to engage with you tonight. Uh, I'm really excited because uh, I have my great friend Luke here joining with us. Uh, you may recognize uh, Luke from last year when he came and shared with us at Excess. Uh, he's one of my great friends. We have many things in common, love our cricket, love our footy. He does go for Gold Coast Suns and the Hobart Hurricanes, so we'll forgive him for that. Uh, but he also has a passion for Jesus and to share the good news with you. So I'm really looking forward to what he has to share tonight. And so I'm going to hand over to you, Luke, now. Awesome. Well, Excess Youth, it's great to be with you. I was really looking forward to uh, being in front of you, seeing you face to face, but obviously things are happening in the world that we can't control. Um, but it's great to speak to you tonight. I'm really excited to be speaking with you about Easter. Every year... Easter gives us an opportunity to stop, to reflect, and to ask ourselves, what does it mean? Who was this Jesus? And how does what he said and what he did actually apply to my life? And normally around Easter time, we might be able to spend some time with loved ones. We might see family. We might see friends. We might go on Easter camp. But this year, Easter is different in a lot of ways. But in a lot of ways, it's also exactly the same. Because while you may not be able to go out, you may not be able to spend time with your friends, you may be stuck at home, you might miss out on Easter traditions and Easter camp, Easter has not changed because God is in control. He's in control right now, just as he was when Jesus was on the cross. And Jesus is king, he's alive, and he's powerfully active today by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus has done for you and in you at Easter has not changed. And while you may not be at camp, you may not get to go away, you might be stuck at home in a situation that isn't ideal, let me tell you that Jesus is as in love with you now as he's always been. And at Easter, we get to stop, and this year maybe more so, and celebrate the victory of our King. The story of Easter is a story of opposites, death, gives way to life. Sin gives way to forgiveness and dark gives way to light. Now, when I was a child, I was actually afraid of the dark and every night I dreaded going to bed. Um, same as Pete last week, I dreaded that time where mum and dad would come in, say good night, turn the light off and disappear out into the hallway. And because I grew up in Murray Bridge, and we're not soft, we didn't get a light light, the hallway light would go off and it would be pitch black. And often I'd lie there and I'd look around and you'd try to make out shapes in your room and the dressing gown that was hanging on the back of your closet door in darkness looks like a ghost. And the guitar neck that's sticking up from the end of your bed looks like a monster's hand reaching up to grab you. And sooner or later, the peace I was feeling after mum and dad had tucked me in would slowly disappear and fear would start to rise and eventually, inevitably, I'd call out. There's a real world reality going on at the moment that feels a bit like that. The global pandemic that we're facing is pushing people to their limits and our society is only just starting to face it. People are losing their jobs. People are running out of money and families that maybe shouldn't be confined together are being forced to spend a lot of time in each other's presence. And there's a real and pressing feeling of hopelessness and fear that's reigning in our nation. And there's nothing I can do to fix it. There's nothing you can do to fix it. And it is easy to stop and to think, wow, this is hopeless. Because there is a darkness. 
and it can't be overcome by man. And I know it's dark right now, and whether you're worried about coronavirus or whether there's other things in your life that are really dark right now, whether it's family situations or your health, your physical health, your mental health, stuff that's going on with friends, stuff that's going on at school, what I want to tell you is that while things are in darkness, Easter tells me that light always overcomes. Light always wins. Because ever since the fall, ever since Adam and Eve first rebelled against God, mankind has actually been in darkness. So maybe what's going on right now in society is actually making us more aware of the reality of where mankind and God actually sit. Maybe it's making us more aware of the spiritual reality that we actually face. So John chapter 1 speaks to this reality and to what God has done about it. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Skimming down to verse 9, it says, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right, to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So there's two things, two, that I want to pull out of that and that I feel like God wants to share with us tonight around Easter. The first thing, Jesus is light and has overcome darkness. You see, despite the darkness that's around us, Jesus has won. When Jesus went to the cross, when he was put on trial and murdered despite his innocence, he destroyed the power of sin and death for all time. Jesus rose again in victory, which means we can too. In Hebrews 2, it tells us that in his resurrection, he defeated, destroyed the devil once and for all. In John 16, it says that he has overcome the world. So the darkness in the world right now, though it may be real, is nothing to the power of Jesus' light and what he's done through Easter. And the second thing I want to share with you tonight is that Jesus' light brings adoption to the Father. John 1.12 says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. When I was a child, like I said earlier, I was afraid of the dark. And every night, I would dread the time when mum and dad would turn off the light and I'd be surrounded in the darkness and eventually, out of fear, I would cry out. And uh, what would happen is that I'd hear some footsteps and a light switch and the hallway light would come on so there'd, there'd start to be a bit of light in the room. Just a glimmer, enough to sort of make out the shapes and realize that the guitar neck wasn't actually a monster's hand. Enough to to realize that the dressing gown on the back of the door wasn't actually a ghost. But it was still dark and it was still gloomy. But then what would happen is my father would open the door and he'd flick on the light switch and the world would light up. And in that moment of light, In that moment of clarity, fear would break, darkness would flee and peace was restored because I could see my father. The light revealed who my father was, the person I needed and longed for and revealed what I was, a child in need of a father. And this is what the father has done through Easter. The world in darkness was brought into the reality of Jesus' light. In the light, we can see clearly and we can recognize our Father. In the light of Jesus, we recognize our need for our Father. And if you've received Jesus, if you've believed 
in what he has done, then you live in his light and the darkness cannot overcome you. Because where light shines, darkness flees. So whatever darkness you may be experiencing right now, Jesus has the answer. Whatever darkness is threatening to overcome you, to drown you, whatever darkness is threatening your your health and your sanity, Jesus can overcome. Easter is a time we remember that Jesus has won. He's won. His light overcomes the darkness. And if you believe in his name, then you have the right to become children of God and you join with him in sharing Jesus' light in the world. So two things. One, if you don't know Jesus tonight, then my prayer is that you meet him, that you cry out from whatever darkness you're in and that his light shows you who the Father is and shows you that you need him. And two, if you know Jesus, then my challenge for you is this. How are you, this Easter, going to spread the light of Christ to the world? Because isolation or not, Jesus is king and his kingdom will grow. Thanks for having me tonight. Let me pray for you and then you'll go into your small groups. Father God, thank you so much that at Easter we celebrate your victory. We celebrate the light of the world coming in and overcoming darkness. And Father, I just pray for anyone tonight who's listening, anyone at all that doesn't know you, Father, I pray that they would meet you, that they would know your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. What an encouraging word. I really encourage you, if you'd like prayer, please click on the prayer button. One of your Exodus leaders would love to pray for you. But now we've got the opportunity to go into our small groups. Uh, So, Follow the directions from your small group leaders and you'll be able to now go into your Zoom video chats. Have a great weekend, guys. God bless.